Um, unfortunately, our land is a plains here, so we're not going to be able to unbridle growth and start playing our cards. So we're going to have to mull, even though we had two creatures. Um, this hand here does not have a creature that we can enchant, which makes it quite a bit worse than I would like. But um, otherwise, we have an okay hand. Am I supposed to keep this? I don't want to mulligan into oblivion here. But maybe we are supposed to mulligan one more time. Okay, so we have another no land hand, or our first no land hand. Uh, so we have to mulligan this for sure. Okay, here we go. We have something here. So we have to get rid of three cards. We'll get rid of Cave of Temptation. Um, we'll keep definitely the Vestige, the Bogle. Um, the Sprawl needs a Forest. So maybe we keep the Ash Barrens. And the Abundant Growth. We can Crumbling Vestige, put the Abundant Growth on it, and then go get another Forest and play the Bogle. So we'll make green mana, put abundant growth onto it, and we get to draw a card, and we got a forest. <laughs> cool. Alright, so we're pretty set for lands at this point, and we'll be able to put an Ancestral Mask onto the Slippery Bogle and start uh, swinging in for damage. Ancestral Mask counts each other enchantment, but we do have one with the abundant growth here. Okay, so they have counter magic up here, which uh, means they could counter our Slippery Bogle. So we're just going to go get planes and pass the turn. I don't want to play my Bogle into a Spellstutter Sprite, Prohibit, Counterspell, any of that nonsense. Okay, we'll play Abundant Growth. And we get a ledge walker. So here we can play the ledge walker and test for a counterspell um, because ledge walker won't be countered by a fairy. But I don't think our opponent will be playing fairies. Um, they're playing the uh, familiars deck. But they could absolutely have prohibit. And they do. Okay, they're going to fall from favor of their own creature to get the Monarch. They know that we're hexproof, so there's no reason to hold on to that. And we're going to be able to put down Bogle with Mask. Okay, we have ourselves a hexproof 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay, we should actually just be hitting six here. Um, we don't have any action for what the opponent is doing. So we might as well save time on our clock. Ooh, we get the Rancor. That's a very nice draw. Should have kept that forest in hand, but this is fine. Okay, we take the Monarch. I wonder if our opponent is playing any good copies of Curfew. Okay, so this could be their turn to go off. They take the Monarch back. OK, 
Okay, they play the Archaeomancer. And they've actually been gaining quite a bit of life, so we don't even have a lethal attack here yet. We are going to get a little bit more uh, damage from this Unbridled Growth, but it only draws a card once we sacrifice it, so then we will lose the bonus that it's already giving us. Let's see if we can get a better enchantment. We'll sacrifice the, uh, the growth. We get a Glade Cover Scout. It is a secondary creature, so we wouldn't have to worry as much about curfew or the like. But I was really looking for uh, Armadillo Cloak or something like that. Abundant Growth would have also been quite good. Okay, so they attack in with two creatures so they can take the Monarch back. And they have Ghostly Flicker. So that's going to get them value, gain them life. And they also have Prohibit in hand that we know about. So their hand is pretty stacked, but they still have to find an answer to the Bogle or win the game. Okay, they have a snap. Returning the Moldrifter itself. And they're going to have to play some more spells, but they've got tons of mana, so I'm sure that won't be a problem for them. Every spell they cast, they're gaining life through their God Pharaoh's Faithfuls. So I guess in a sense that is dealing with our creatures. So, are they going to tap out here to Ghostly Flicker, the Archaeomancer, and Moldrifter? No, they're going to let the Moldrifter go. Um, they have enough cards in hand, right? And this way they get to keep up Prohibit. I think it's pretty smart for them to keep up a Counterspell. But they are still in quite a bit of trouble. Starting out here with Abundant Growth is going to be quite nice. Kind of give us a uh, soft spell for them to potentially counter, but they might even not... might choose not to. Okay, so we get to draw our card. We get an extra pump on our bogle. I'd love to throw the ethereal armor onto it, but they would absolutely prohibit that, which would gain them two life. So I think we just attack here and force them to block. That's all they have to do. It lets them live one more turn. That's all they're looking for. We'll play the scout. See if they do anything. They're actually going to prohibit the scout? I'm going to put the ethereal armor now onto the bogle. They might have thought that that was just our best thing. Uh, this ethereal armor... They might still have a counterspell. Okay, they're flickering in response. Ah, okay, so they untap their island, and then flicker the Okeomancer, and that gets them Prohibit back. So they're going to be able to counter our uh, aura, as well as gain a bunch of life. But that does take the Ghostly Flicker away from them. It's one toy gone. Uh, but their hand is stacked because of uh, the way they play. Still, for a mull to, what was it, four? We're doing quite well. We might even uh, pull through here. We might have even blocked that with the Glade Cover Scout, but I think it's too late. Yeah. Just to keep the Monarch around.
So they've been using Ghostly Flicker, targeting our Kaomancer and land, in order to be able to cast more spells and gain more life. They gain two life with every iteration. So that's keeping them out of uh, lethal territory. Another Ancestral Mask. Um, let's see here, the Prohibits in the Graveyard. If they, but they could absolutely Ghostly Flicker and grab it and uh, cast it, right? Because they would, two mana, they Ghostly Flicker the Archaeomancer, pull the Prohibit back into hand, and Ghostly Flicker an Island, and then they can Prohibit my Ancestral Mask. No, because the Mask costs three, so they wouldn't be able to Prohibit it. They just have straight up counterspell? Okay. Oh, we got ram through, and it's an instant? That's really good. Uh, if they tap out, we can kill them. So once they put Ghostly Flicker onto the stack, we're going to try and ram through. So I decided to do it now. Um, it might be a mistake if they have a second Ghostly Flicker, but I think this might be right. Oh, okay. They're going to last breath their own creature, which gains them four life, and prevents my ram through from working. But it also means that their ghostly flicker is not going to target that Archaeomancer anymore. They will still flicker the Mole Drifter, which is quite good for them, but they lose that ghostly flicker. Okay, they have Snap, so they're going to be able to uh, continue to go off, as it were. Uh, they can untap the Chantry, which is going to be very mana positive for them. And they have another Sunscape Familiar, so their mana, their blue spells cost two less now, making the Archaeomancer cost the same as a Counterspell. Okay, so they have Ghostly Flicker. Are they able to just, like, win from here? I mean, like, gain Unbound Life? I think so, right? Because this just goes on forever. So they can gain as much life as this is. This would have been the perfect point to crash ram through. Um, I think the opponent has us here, though. I'm pretty sure this is uh, infinite life. So, uh, Standard Bearer looks pretty good.
we could also bring in Dispel. I think that's what we're interested in from the sideboard. I want to take the Armadillo Cloak back. We're going to keep those. Um, the three mana spells are much harder for our opponents to prohibit. Whereas the one mana spells, they can uh, counter those just as easy as the twos. Wow, it's hard to uh, slideboard with this list. All right, that'll have to do. Uh, this looks fine. How are we going to play it out? I think we probably go Crumbling Vestige, Abundant Growth, and then turn 2, play Ledgewalker. Then turn 3, try and put an Ancestral Mask on it, if we can get the mana. We might actually want to play Colony Garden first, so that we can Ledgewalker into Ancestral Mask guaranteed. We wouldn't have abundant growth in that situation, which I don't really like. But we're definitely keeping the hand. We're just trying to figure out how we're supposed to play the cards out, which order. I think I'll play the Colony Garden first. We can get the Abundant Growth out later. We already have a decent um, hand towards uh, what we're looking for. Utopia Sprawl, okay. We'll need a Forest for that one. No attacks with the plant. I mean, I guess I could have sent them a message there. Okay, they have the God Pharaoh's Faithful. And we get another uh, land here. This is a pretty good one, being the forest. So we can actually uh, enchant it with the Utopia Sprawl and cast the Ancestral Mask. So that was a pretty good draw. Uh, what color do we name with Utopia Sprawl? Probably just green. Target this, use the mana here. because we already have a white source, we have Abundant Growth. I don't think we need to worry about that. Okay, let's start by attacking for three. They can't block, and uh, we'll move on from there. Abundant Growth will be fine next turn, I think. Okay, so opponent has a hand full of spells, and they're going to start going off next turn. Oh, hey, Crown. It's been a while. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Okay, we got another Bogle. Uh, let's just attack for five and we'll play our creatures out. Good to hear. Happy New Year.
Oh man, their blue spells are going to be so cheap now. They're going to snap our plant. Ghostly flicker their islands. And play our Kaomancer. Oh no, do they just have infinite life again? Oh no! Oh wow. GG opponent. Okay, this hand looks great. We're just missing um, a white land for ethereal armor, but uh, I'm going to keep this and hope that we find some more auras very quickly. And we'll play the Bogle. What a beast. Okay, we could be playing the mirror match here, or this could be walls, could be a lot of things. Okay, we can put Abundant Growth on something and then Ethereal Armor the Bogle, and let's go. Ooh, we got Ancestral Mask, so another land, we're going to be attacking for big damage. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a very different format. Um, I mean, yes and no, really. We have a lot of the same decks are you know still very powerful, but they all got better cards. Uh, the walls deck actually got way better. Okay, so ram through is a dead card. Land, nice. Yeah, take that. 14. Let's go. Doesn't have Trample. So they have to let it through if uh, we're going to do damage. Okay, they have an Ancestral Mask of their own. Oh, wow. They, they count each other. So we're counting each other's auras for the Ancestral Mask. That's wild. They are so close to just killing us. If they had ethereal armor, we would be dead, but they don't. So what are we supposed to do in the mirror match? I mean, we definitely take out the ram through. Get rid of all those. I think we bring in electricery. Uh, natural state. Could bring in young wolf. Ooh, standard bear. Number one for sure. Lifelink seems fine too. So we have a lot of options here. We're going to have to trim down uh, based on what's important. The electricery is super good um, if we manage to kill one of their creatures with it, but it's nowhere near guaranteed. The standard bear is the best card for sure. I like the natural state. Maybe the electricery is just going to be too slow, especially on the draw. All right, we're going to go with this. I think that's close enough. The standard bearer is great. Natural state, like I was saying, seems good. Uh, if it destroys the opponent's ancestral mask or armadillo cloak, that's going to be very worthwhile. Oh, I see what you're saying there, Crown. Yep. Um, I'm hoping that uh, we'll get a ban announcement soon, but I've been expecting it you know, to drop at any time, and it still hasn't, so who knows. I do like that uh, the Cascade creatures were great. It's been bringing out, like, a whole new genres of decks and um, actually improved walls, which went from a meme to one of the better decks in the format, which is pretty cool. But, yeah, we, uh, we gave Tron and uh, the Fairies decks another really, really strong toy, and they have been running with it. Uh, yeah, we keep this.
one, two, three, Glade Cover Scout, Rancor Abundant Growth, Ancestral Mask. Ooh, we get the Armadillo Cloak as well. That's pretty nice. Okay, so no Standard Bearer. Ooh, that, if they name White, that could actually be Standard Bearer. Ooh, they don't have it. Phew. Okay, so if we put the Rancor on the Glade Cover Scout and attack, we should still attack here. Um, we have more creatures to replace the Scout with if they block. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, and I understand the sentiment. Um, Popper is not in a very healthy place, and it hasn't been for a very long time. I'm um, speaking honestly. I'm really worried about a standard bearer here, floating your two mana. Just another ledge walker. Phew. All right, we're good. We're gonna put the I think the armadillo cloak. No, we already have ran uh, rancor for trample, so we'll go for the ancestral mask here. I think we should be uh, winning this game at this point. It's going to be difficult for the opponent to do anything about this, but uh, they could have um, natural state, natural state the ancestral mask, and then kill the glade cover scout with a block. Okay, so this turns it around. Um, they're able to trade. But we get the Rancor back, and we have plenty of creatures to reload with. The unfortunate thing is losing the Mask. Oh, okay. Um, no, I don't mind you asking. Um, we've been very, very lucky in Nova Scotia. So we haven't seen very many cases. Um, like, our new cases will be generally single digits. Um... So I feel extraordinarily lucky that uh, I haven't had to deal with a lot of uh, the same thing that other people have. Okay. Uh, we just pass here. We'll play these two cards next turn on the scout and hopefully that will be enough. Lifelink is going to be pretty good. So um, what about you Crown? How's the virus situation where you're at? Not too sure where you're located. Got a pilgrim, that's pretty nice. We'll be able to use that to go find uh, what's name. Gonna have to take a second here and decide if we're supposed to use the pilgrim. I don't think so, because this isn't wouldn't be lethal, right? We would have uh, one, two, so that would be plus three. That wouldn't even be close. Oh, we should have attacked with this Bogle as well. That's a mistake. I'm not going to block with it. I mean, I guess I could block one damage with it. Whoopee. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, they rolled out those vaccines very, very quickly. Okay, so they're passing. Their creature has first strike. 
Oh, oh, that's right. How did, uh, when did that happen? Have you recovered? We got a cartouche. So that will give our creature uh, first strike, which would mean it would trade with the opponent. Not interested in that. We have Heliod's Pilgrim, and that's going to go get us uh, Ethereal Armor, which is going to do way more. think this is GG. Um, they could actually still get us if they have another one of these natural state. Okay, we won. Uh, we're going to keep this. We have all the pieces. And I think we're playing against Bogles again. I haven't played against a single Bogles players for weeks, and now I play against two in a row. Okay. It is what it is. I don't think any other deck in Popper plays Garden. So I'm pretty sure we're playing against Bogles. All right, let's get the namesake out. That's right. Oh, we're playing against Infect. Ooh, I haven't seen Infect uh, since the no ban list pauper tournament. Uh, when was that? A couple of months ago? In any event, um, we don't see Infect very often anymore in Pauper. The deck was basically banned out of existence. Um, losing Invigorate was uh, pretty tough for the Infect deck to deal with. Womp womp, you can't kill people on turn two anymore. Oh, good morning to you, sir. All right, so what we're going to do here... We're going to put Rancor... Hmm, no, I think we put Ethereal Armor onto the Bogle, because that gives it First Strike. So we'll play Abundant Growth, play Ethereal Armor on Bogle, then attack. Hopefully they won't have Binds of Vastwood for the Ethereal Armor. So this would be a pretty good time for the opponent to play Vines. For them, of course. Not for me. Okay, there it is. The MTG bot thing came up late and uh, must not have seen it. So they're 0-0. Zero, zero. This is the first match of their league. Uh, let's attack. Okay, past turn. Next turn, Ancestral Mask. We are uh, having to do double the damage that the opponent has to do, but we do it in larger chunks. Um, opponent does have six cards in hand, which is scary. Maybe we're supposed to put the Glade Cover Scout out next turn so that we can potentially block because opponent could just kill us here. They could go groundswell, groundswell, anything. They're paying mana for the mutagenic growth. I mean, that is a good sign. And they're playing Ranger's Guile. So I don't think they can kill us anymore. Good. We survived. 
Ooh, Utopia Sprawl. What does that mean? It means we have more mana. Well, we have the same amount of mana. We still have 20 health, that's right. They did nothing to our life total. Nothing. Okay, so yeah, we're going to Glade Cover Scout Rancor here. Uh, we'll name White, I think, with this. Even though it's a little bit awkward with the spells that we're casting here. We already have this for white mana. We probably don't need another white mana, right? We can just go green. Okay, let's put the Rancor onto the Bogle. Nice. And we'll set up for the kill next turn. So we got the Scout to block. Hopefully they don't have a Rancor. I mean, they're in attack step, so no Rancor. Ooh, they don't even attack. Nice. And we get Ethereal Armor. Okay, this game should be over. Oh, target a creature. Ooh, that was close. Oh man, that's right. Vines wouldn't work. Yeah, that's true. Sweet. Don't have to worry about that then. Alright, um... I think we just go ahead and put Ethereal Armor onto it as well. Look how big the beast is. And all its pants. That's enough. Okay, so if we're playing against Infect, we're going to want Gutshot. And probably standard bearer. Um, armadillo cloak is hot garbage. Ram through seems good. Yeah. Might be worthwhile playing electricery, just like as another removal spell. Uh, what about undying wolf? That might be a pain for them to deal with. Creature, wolf. Because wolves are separate from beasts. I'm wondering if Dispel... I don't think we want to go that far into it. But I mean, this is definitely another option. Something that we might think about if we go to a game three. Being able to counter their pump spells um, could absolutely be the difference between a win and a loss. Okay, so no creatures. Let's mulligan. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. When we go to game three, we'll bring in Dispel. This hand is a keep. And I think we get rid of one of the lands, probably just one of the forests. Go green, green on Utopia Sprawl. Okay, so they do have the turn one uh, infect creature.
Cartouche of Solidarity is going to be a pretty good one, though. Briar Shield. Ooh, that's cool. They only have the one land, which means their hand is going to be stacked. Okay, definitely want to play the Cartouche. Because that'll give us a blocker. Besides the ledge walker, I mean. We're not going to want to block with the ledge walker. They could just sack the briar shield. And that would end our creature. But this warrior here, this warrior here is going to block for sure. Okay. Seal of Strength. So we're not going to be killing their creature with our spells. Let's draw a card and see what we find on top. just another land bogus so we have the option actually no we have three mana here so we get to do everything we don't have nearly enough damage on the field opponent's going to be able to kill us with a glistener off very soon And we pretty much have to block every turn. That's not sustainable. And they got their second land, too. If we don't block, we're dead, I'm sure of that. And they have an Ickerclaw Mirror, so they have two Infect creatures now. Got a Cave of Temptation. One, two, three, four. So yeah, we can put the two counters onto the ledge walker. Becomes a uh, six, four for strike. Which I think is enough. No, because this is seven. But we still have to keep it back. Um, I think we're dead. Seal of Strength on the Icker Claw Mirror, Giant Growth, so that's almost lethal in itself. They need one more spell. And they have it. Okay. Playing against Infect. I'm going to take out Pilgrim because it's slow. I want the Young Wolf as a blocker. Maybe the... No, the Cartouche of Solidarity is pretty good because it gives me another blocker. Maybe the Rancor. We're losing a lot of ways to put Trample on our creatures this way, but if we're killing their creatures with ours, that's fine too. Nope. This one's fine. We're missing blue mana right now. But the Utopia Sprawl can give us white for the cartouche.
What do we get rid of? I want to keep the ram through. Maybe we get rid of the dispel because we can't cast it. Next turn, Ledge Walker Cartouche. And then we can ram through whatever creature they put into play. And the Rancor is really good with the ram through here combo. That's going to be pretty nice if we get to uh, do that next turn. What we don't want to see is uh, Vines of Vastwood. Seal of Strength is a little bit of a problem. But Ram Through isn't like a fight. Okay, we definitely block. This will cause them to, or force them to use a spell. So one of their spells for half of one of ours. Okay, and they're tapped out. Let's hope this works. Nice. I think they have sixth. That's amazing. Okay, we're out of gas now. We have no cards in hand. But opponent does not seem to have an infect creature. And they can't actually block our ledge walker. Ooh, and we draw one of the best cards possible in standard bearer. So we'll put Standard Bearer down. Sure, they Giant Growth the, the dude. The thing is, our Ledge Walker cannot be blocked except by creatures with flying. So we will attack in with no fear. Okay. Feeling pretty good at this point. There we go, we have another match. Not a huge fan of this hand, but I think we keep it. We have two redraws here with abundant growth. We have a creature, so we'll keep. And we have nice ramp here with a sprawl as well. Um, I think we go green with a Sprawl. We have uh, Abundant Growths to turn the other lands into white lands. And we'll pass. Thriving Isle Red. Okay, uh, this could be Tron. A lot of things it could be. We get the Ethereal Armor. Um, so the question is, do we cast the Abundant Growth or the Ethereal Armor this turn? I think I want to cast the Armor to get it on the creature, so we don't have to worry about um, a Cannonade or something. Thornwood Falls, okay, could definitely still be Tron. They have a single blue or red mana up. Let's start drawing cards.
Okay, we're attacking for six this turn. Not bad for a turn three in Pauper. We have a secondary creature, so that will save us from a curfew, but I don't think we would be seeing curfew main, more of a cyborg card. Okay, opponent looks to be passing, but they have three mana up. This would have been their um, fall from favor turn, but our creatures are hexproof. Um, we could play Rancor here. That would be playing into um, their counter magic. But I think it's still better to play it than not. Okay. Basically a free counter spell for them. They have a cannonade, so that will kill one of my creatures. Cave of Temptation from the opponent. So we haven't seen any Tron lands yet. But this really looks like a Tron deck. Unwind, Fiery Cannonade, Prophetic Prism, Thriving Isle. These are Tron cards. All right, we're going to just pass here with the opponent at three life. We have a 6-6, six, six, pseudo unblockable. Um, they could have Mole Drifter. Mole Drifter would block the Ledge Walker. Wouldn't do a very good job of it. There's the Urza Land. Bonder's Ornament, but they're still in uh, a lot of trouble here. Um, they could Fog. They probably have Fog this turn. Armadilla Cloak. Because we like doing more damage. Lethal damage, that's not enough. We gotta do more than lethal damage. Alright, here comes that moment's piece. No, they don't have it. Oh. Okay, we got that game versus Tron. That's cool. Alright, what are we supposed to do versus Tron? We have Flaring Pain. Uh, natural State. And Dispel. We could also play the Crimson Acolyte, which would protect our characters, our creatures, from Cannonade. Uh, we can take out the Ram through, I think. Hey there, Willis. What's going on? Thanks for dropping by. Just deciding if I want to bring in the Crimson Accolade or not. It seems very so-so. Ooh. Thanks, Willis.
What am I going to do? Okay. We got just uh, under a minute left here. So I think I'm going to submit with this. Thanks for the heads up, Willis. Hate that Stonehorn lock. Just hates it so much. All right, we have no creature. We have an abundant growth, which could potentially find one for us, but I think I would rather mulligan and get seven looks at a creature instead of just one. This hand is fine. We can just get rid of the Ash Barons. Okay, opponent mulliganed as well. Unfortunately, the ethereal armor and the cartouche both cost white mana. So our bogle might be under threat. Okay, we got the rancor, so we should be able to uh, get the ethereal armor to give it plus two plus two at that point. Just worried about the cannonade, one of the ways for the opponent to kill our creatures. Okay, so they don't actually have access to red mana right now. Nice. Both spells resolved. Attacking for five on turn two. Let's go. Okay, we have no red mana right now for Flaring Pain. Bit of a problem. Okay, there's their red mana. A little bit late. Uh, there's our red mana. attack for eight. Okay, so they have the moment's peace while flaring pain. don't get to cast Flaring Pain very often, but when you resolve a Flaring Pain, it looks really good. Nice, we win the match. Creature, auras, lands, this seems fine. Um, we could... Glade cover Scout first turn with the Crumbling Vestige, and then put a Rancor on it. I think this is fine. Yeah, I really appreciate that, Como. The, uh... Oh, Ginger Brute off a Swamp. I really, really like that MTG Bot is telling us what's going on with the opponent. And every once in a while, it uh, gives you, um, what's the name, uh, something like they're, the last time we've seen them, you know, two weeks ago, they were playing this deck. So I wonder then if MTG Bot is telling people that I'm on Yogmoth combo. 
because I think that was the last 5.0 I got and the last 5.0 that I got that was published. Yeah, it tells you the last 5.0 that was published by that person. Okay, forest off the top would be fine. You'll need to rename your decks. Yeah. Going through all the naming conventions. Okay, so we got a Bogle. We're going to play that instead of the Elf, just because it's the namesake of the deck. So, Swamp, Ginger Brood, Cauldron Familiar, Wild. Okay. Armadillo Cloak. Armadillo Cloak's going to be very strong in a couple of turns. Um, ideally next turn, but we're going to need to draw a land for that to happen. We could play the Colony Garden this turn, so we could play Armadillo Cloak next turn. That seems fine, actually. No attacks with a Bogle this turn. Opponent's on a very interesting deck here. This is um, the evolution of the uh, Mono Black Death deck that has been popularized lately. Everyone is putting their own spin on it. It's pretty cool. Oh, so it's a trigger. It's not lifelink. Okay. And they do have enough power on the board now to kill our creature. So we're going to need to give it first strike or more toughness. Look how the board just exploded this turn. Okay, we will be able to attack now because they attacked like that. I think that I probably would have kept a couple things back, but they don't know that uh, we're not ready to attack into their creatures. Ooh, that got lucky. We just happened to draw a white aura as our last card. So we had the mana for it. Uh, I was a little bit fast and loose with how I was targeting my auras onto the vestige. It meant that we had fewer options this turn, but more options next turn. 
Okay, opponent concedes. They're not able to race our lifelinker. We're going to bring in Young Wolf and Lifelink. And maybe Essence Harvest. Just as another way to gain life. Just thinking about the last card I want to take out of the deck here. Actually kind of leaning towards Ancestral Mask, just because of how much mana it costs, and it doesn't give us lifelink. But maybe, I don't know, I want to keep Heliod's Pilgrim because that would allow me to find Armadillo Cloak or lifelink. So we're going to go with this. We only have one land. I'm not sure that I can keep this hand with just the one land. Don't have any way to create other uh, colors of mana either. So we could go Bogle, Scout, and Rancor, but the rest of our hand is uncastable. Uh, this hand isn't much better. Here we go. Ah, oh, but no creatures. This hand was really close. Nope. Okay, this is a keep, but what do we have left? At what cost, right? We get to keep three cards. We get two lands and a creature. Woof. That's rough. But, I mean, that's the deck, right? All right, we'll get him game three. Probably should have thrown away the planes, kept the armadillo cloak. Ram through. I wonder what the reason for the golden egg in this deck is. Oh, yeah, I see now. After the artifact part, it does say it's food. Cool. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, they're keeping the Cauldron Familiar back as a blocker. And now they're attacking with it. No blocks on our side, of course. They have a Fleshbag Marauder? Good thing we have a plant, huh?
Okay, we get the Ancestral Mask. It's not going to do anything for us yet, but each aura that uh, we cast from now on is going to give our Bogle plus two plus two. That's true too. Okay, they have the village rights. Sacrificing their attacker. Wonder why they didn't attack with it first. Ooh, they're going to unearth the Fleshbag Marauder. That's going to kill our Bogle. Ah, uh, we can seed this at that point. We do have the Young Wolf in. Okay. We could actually bring in Electricery. I think Electricery looks pretty good in this matchup. They have a lot of X1s. Okay, this is a keep. We get to keep a seven. Okay, opponent does have a creature, so Slippery Bogle will not be able to attack unless I draw something good here. Ethereal Armor is good, but I cannot cast it. Don't have white mana. So I'll just put the Rancor on the Bogle this turn, and that'll grow it with the Ancestral Mask next turn. White mana would be quite good here. Now oh, they have Guess Verdict, so we lose our creature. Opponent is truly ready to face the Bogle's matchup. And without a creature, uh, we have nothing to do. Okay, we get a Pilgrim, but we can't cast it. We have no white mana. think cloak gives me the life I mean it does don't laugh it works okay we got a creature now still no white mana village rights draws them another two cards opponent two for twos themselves that way ledge walker there we go that's a creature we can put an ancestral mask on that that'll clock the opponent if we draw white mana we're going to be doing okay but we're still at a pretty uh, tenuous position here. OK, 
Okay, we'll sacrifice the plant. We have the Rancor back to our hand. So we can put the Rancor onto the Ledge Walker. But that's not a guarantee. They could uh, absolutely kill our Ledge Walker here with a Flesh Bag Marauder or something similar. Ooh, that Mortician Beetle is big. Okay, uh, we're dead. I mean, we can play the Heliod's Pilgrim here, which does block the Mortician Beetle. What do we get here? We just get like ethereal armor, I think. Could get Utopia Sprawl. Make some more mana. I think we get Utopia Sprawl, and then if we draw um, land next turn, or sorry, creature next turn, then we can kind of go off. But it's really not looking good here. Maybe I was supposed to get the other um, land aura that draws us a card. Cat in the cat in the yard, so we're dead. Oh, we're totally dead. They have unearth on the flashbag marauder. GG opponent. 